Welcome. Today's lesson is on bulk density. Before we get into the problem sets, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what bulk density is. One of the things that bulk den density definitely is an indicator of is soil health and soil compaction. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at the, at the relationship between bulk density and also uh, porosity. Um, some things that, that bulk density affects, it affects things like infiltration, like how water percolates to the soil. Uh, it, it also um, also dictates how far their roots can, can actually stretch out and get down into the soil to get water and nutrients. We also take a look at the water capacity. When we're talking about bulk density, the further in the, the soil profile you go, uh, the, the, the heavier or the more um, the greater the bulk density, and that definitely impacts the water capacity. And as I said before, uh, nutrient availability. And that impacts a lot of the microorganisms. Uh, as the bulk density increases, it makes it much more difficult for some of these microorganisms to be able to break things down. So with that in mind, uh, let's talk about porosity and also bulk density. Before we get into the porosity part, I just want to compare two things that you're going to be hearing about. Bulk density versus particle density. When we're looking at bulk density, what we're looking at is a, in the soil profile, we're looking at one cubic centimeter um, of, of soil. In other words, uh, a length times width uh, times depth. And when we take a look at that, just that one little cube of one by one by one soil, it weighs on average 1.3 grams. So if you take that little bitty cube of, of soil and we dry it and it weighs 1.3 grams and we divide it by the volume, again, that one by one by one um, centimeter cube, that's what we divide it by. So when we divide the 1.32 by 1, we get, on average, 1.32. That's our bulk density. That includes not only the solids, but also the pore spaces. Now we get on the particle density side. We just want to look at the particles. We just want to look at the solid stuff of, of, of soil. So we take that same one cubic block, and we take, essentially, the pores out of it. And what you left behind is with the solids, and that solids is is only about half that uh, uh, cube that we've been talking about. So we take the mass of the solids, which is 1.32, just as we did in the bulk density, but because the volume only takes up half, you divide 0.5 into 1.32, you get a bulk, uh, excuse me, a particle density of 2.64 or 5. Uh, kind of whatever your preference is. That's a constant. That's the thing that really doesn't change much uh, because we've already taken all the pores out. So now that you have a little bit of understanding about bulk density and particle density, let's take a look at problem number one. What is the bulk density of a soil that's 760 um, grams of dry? Once we dry it all out and we uh, put it on the scale, that's what it weighs, 765 grams. And then the volume is 510 cubic centimeters. So let's set it up. Our, uh, our um, uh, subscript B happens to be bulk density. So that's, that's our basic formula. So let's go ahead and take a look. 765 is the mass. The volume is 510. So we're going to divide 510 into 765. And we get a bulk density reading of 1.5. 5 grams per cubic centimeters. And if we were to cross-reference that with the soil textural triangle, uh, it's about where a silt loam is, silt loam soil. So that gives you kind of a perspective of how we can look at bulk density in terms of soil texture. So this is a soil texture chart, and if you look on all of those lines on, they're kind of like um, reading a, a, a contour map. And you can see where some of those lines go. Like, for instance, a 1.4 bulk density is kind of in the clay range, whereas a 1.75 is somewhere in the sandy loam areas. And then problem number two. Now what we're going to do is take a look at porosity and bulk density and see what the relationship is. 
because that's one of the things that we're trying to do in this video is what what relationship the bulk density has to porosity. So when we look at problem set number two, what we want to do is we want to know the, the uh, porosity in soil number one, which had a bulk density of 1.5. Again, our constant that we're going to be using is our particle density, and that's at 2.65. So the equation for calculating porosity is percent porosity equals 100 to, uh, uh, minus bulk density divided into particle density, density that you multiply by 100 with. So let's take a look what that looks like. 1.5 divided by 265 times 100. And as you can see, dividing 1.5 by 265, bulk density divided uh, by our particle density, 0 0.56603. And then when we multiply that by 100, we get 56.603. So that's going to help us calculate the percentage. And when we subtract that by 100, you're going to get 43.39%. Uh, so again, what does that have in terms of a soil texture? So when we take a look at that porosity at 43%, a little bit over 43%, it's going to be in the range of a clay soil or in that, that range kind of near the top third uh, of our, our uh, triangle. So... We can calculate porosity based on, obviously, our bulk density. So, But there's some, some other problems that we want to look at. And again, I just want to remind you that the, the answer came from 1.5, which was, which was question number one, what we calculated already. Problem three, though, is research has shown that corn roots are unable to penetrate a layer of soil having a bulk density of 1.85 grams per cubic centimeters. What is the porosity in this uh, dense soil? Well, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to drop in the 1.85 into our equation. And we're going to divide it by 265. And when we do that, we get a 0.6981. And we're going to multiply that by 100. When we do that, we're going to get a uh, number of 69.81. Subtract that. And then our bulk, excuse me, our porosity is 30 0.18 or a little over 30 percent and again what does that have to do where does that take us probably going to take us somewhere in um, a sandy soil and it definitely does um, because of the pore spaces are really large you put any kind of pressure on um, sand it's going to push all of those particles down into the the pores and drive out some of the air and potentially drive out some of the water that's there as well. So it's not going to be able to hold as much water either. So, and problem number four, we're going to talk about compaction. How does compaction um, manipulate porosity? And the way we do that is we're just going to, let's say, for instance, we have a soil. It's a clay kind of a soil. It's 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter that's in, this, in the clay range. And what would happen if because of our implements and the way we managed our soil, our bulk density changed from 1.2 to 1.7 in the root zone. What would happen to that? How much, um, how much porosity will we, will we lose in, in this scenario? So when we do that, we're going to, again, put, um, drop everything in our bulk density and particle density formula, and 1.2 divided by 265 times 100, and, of course, subtract 100, and we'll just fly by that, 45.28. And we subtract that by 100, and we get 54%, which um, in, in our met estimation, that's um, going to be somewhere in the clay range. And then what we're going to do is what happened uh, to it, we, we did some practice, and now our bulk density is 1.7 instead of 1.2. So we're going to put 1.7 divided by 265 times 100, and when we do that, we get a number of 64.15, subtract that by 100. And basically what we're having here is a percentage, a percentage uh, uh, change. We went from clay to a more sandy soil. We, in the process, we lost 18% of our porosity, which means there's the less pore space for uh, nutrients and water. Um, and also what's going to ha also happen is because there's less pore space for the water, um, it's, the water infiltration is going to be lessened as well. 
So let's summarize what we learned today. Uh, number one is that 100 in our uh, equation really stands for the total soil volume. That's the minerals, it's the solids, it's also the pore spaces. So we take that into account. And then our, our bulk density divided by our particle density, what that has to do with is just the solid portion of it. So if we take out the solids by subtracting it by 100, which is the total, what we're going to have left really are just the pores, the pore spaces, the things that hold the water, the things that, that, that helps get nutrients from the soil into the plant. So, and we want to try to keep as much as that as possible. The second thing that we learned is the relationship between porosity and also bulk density. We basically learned an increase in bulk density is going to mean a decrease uh, in our porosity kind of a corresponding uh, decrease, I might add. So it's an inverse relationship. But what causes this? Well, primarily poor management, uh, such as uh, what we see in soil compaction, driving heavy equipment on the field over and over again. We want to lessen the, the amount of time our, uh, our equipment stays on top of the soil. Second of all, maybe you get it too wet. And when you get it too wet, you smash down the soil particles into the pore spaces. And organic matter reduction. Maybe you cultivate too much. I hope that's helped. And I, I hope that you've helped understand how to do the, the problem sets as uh, well as the, the relationship between porosity and bulk density. Well, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the lab.